Welcome back to our Bible reading challenge. The last time we read about how Abraham, how a son was born to Abraham, Isaac, and how Abraham was tested by God. How Abraham, how Sarah died, how a bride was found for Isaac, and how Abraham died, and how Isaac gave birth to two sons, twins, and how Esau, the firstborn, sold his, sold his birthright. And now today, we are going to start from chapter 26 all the way to chapter 30, 26 to 30. Isaac and Abimelech. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gera. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all this land, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all this land, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws so isaac dwelt in gera and the men of the place asked about his wife and he said she is my sister for he was afraid to say she is my wife the same pattern because he thought lest the men of the place kill me for rebecca because she is beautiful to be with again now it came to pass when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac, showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obviously, she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I said, lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might soon have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of earth and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his fathers, which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found the well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well. Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna, and he moved from there, and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to Bathsheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night, and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant, Abraham's sake. So he built another day and called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servant dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerah with Arouzat, one of his friends, and Vicol, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you ate me and have sent me away from you? 
But they said, We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, Let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, since we have not touched you. And since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace, you are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning, and saw an oath with one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. It came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Bathsheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old, he took as wife Judith, the daughter of Barry the Hittite, and Basemat, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah. Now it came to pass, chapter 27 now, now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt game and to bring it. So Rebekah spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, Indeed, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me game and make savory food for me, that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food from them for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Look, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse on myself, and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice, and go, get them for me. And he went and got, and got them, and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food, such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the choice clothes of her elder son, Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goat on his aunt and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread, which she had prepared, into the hand of her son, Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit, and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. Isaac said to Jacob, Please come here, that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son, Esau, or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. But the ants are the ants of Esau, and he did not recognize him, because its ants were airy, like his brother Esau's ants. So he blessed him. Then he said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's game, so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought out him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me my son, and he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of the clothing, and blessed him, and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who causes you, and blessed be everyone who bless you. Now it happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, 
and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father. He said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless him. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who wanted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved the blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which, with which his father blessed him. And Jacob said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. And the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to my brother Laban in Aaron, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you. And it and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Es. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Es, like this, who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there, of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and, may, and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples, and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the earth in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padanaram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take himself a wife from there, in that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother, and had gone to Padan Aram. Also, Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please his father Isaac. So Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahalat, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's sister, the sister of Nebajot, to be his wife, in addition to the wives he had. Jacob's vow at Bethel. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Aram. So he came to a certain place. And stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep then he, dream he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of god were ascending and descending on it and behold the lord stood above it and said i am the lord god of abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give you, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, 
to the north and to the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city had been loose previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tent, a tent to you. So Jacob went, chapter 29. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the people of the east. And he looked and saw a well in the field, and behold, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of what, for out of that well, they watered the flocks. A large stone was on the well's mouth. Now all the flocks would be gathered there, and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth, water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, where are you from? And they said, We are from Aram. Then he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. So he said to them, is he well? And they said, he is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Then he said, look, it is still high day. It is not time for the cattle to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. But they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and they have rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Now while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and, lift, and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative that, and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. Then it came to pass, when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to, any, to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And there seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. And Laban gave his maid Sil Silpha, Silpha to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not Rachel? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill our week and will give you this one also for the service which you will serve me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled our week. So he gave him his daughter, Rachel, as wife also. And Laban gave his maid, Bilhah, to his daughter, Rachel, as a maid. 
Then Jacob also went in to Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban still another seven years. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, The Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son, and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son, and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Now when Rachel saw that she bought Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel and said, Am I in the place of God who has withheld you from the, from the fruit, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So she said, Here's my maid, build her, go into her and she will bear a child on my knees that I also may have children by her. By her. Then she said, then she gave him Bilha, her maid, as wife. And Jacob went in to her, and Bilha conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case, and he has also heard my voice and gave me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilha conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With great wrestling I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. Then Leah saw that she had stopped bearing. She, when Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Silpha, Silpha, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's maid, Silpha, born Jacob a son. Then Leah said, A troop comes. So she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid, Silpha, born, born Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy. For the daughters will call me blessed. So he called his name Asher. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat, of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. And she said to her, Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went on Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come into me, for I have surely <laughs> for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes, and he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bought Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages, because I have given my meat to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him a six I've borne him six sons. So she called his name Sebulon. Afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dina. Then God remembered Rachel. And God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me and that son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service, which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay, if I have found favor in your eyes. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name me your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For what you have done before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my own house? 
So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will gain feed and keep your uh, stock. I will gain feed and keep your stock. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And this shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my wages comes before you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. So he removed that, that day the male goats that were, speckled, that were speckled and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, everyone that had some white in it, and all the brown ones among the lamps, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Laban fed the rest of Laban, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Now Jacob took for himself broads of green poplar, and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rod, and the rod which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters, in the water in true oof, where the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. Then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the strict and all the brown in the flock of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass, whenever the stronger livestock conceived, that Jacob placed the rods before their, before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. We've come to the end of today's reading. May the Lord bless his word. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Bless you. I'll catch you in the next episode tomorrow.